Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Okay, let's look at a basic calorimetry type problem. How much energy is needed to raise the temperature of a 55 gram sample of aluminum from 22.4 degrees Celsius to 4.6 degrees Celsius? The specific heat of aluminum is 0 0.894 joules per gram degree Celsius. We want to make a list of everything that we've been given in the problem. Get rid of the words by making a list. We know that if something has the units of joules per gram degree Celsius, that must be a specific heat. So the specific heat is 0 0.894 joules per gram degree Celsius. Also, it says that that's the specific heat, so that can't be too hard to figure out. We have 55 grams. We know that that's a mass because grams are a unit of mass. We have two temperatures. There's a 22.4 degrees Celsius and there's a 94.6 degrees Celsius. So if you start at London and fly to Tokyo, then you must be starting at London and flying to Tokyo. So the initial temperature here would be 22.4 degrees Celsius and the final temperature would be 94.6 degrees Celsius. We have enough information to find the change in temperature. Change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. In this case, 94.6 minus 22.4 is 72.2 degrees Celsius. I have a specific heat. I have a mass. I have a change in temperature. Let's get rid of these just so that we don't get tempted to reuse them. But there's something else this problem has in it. Another piece of information that we need to add to our list. So we found the mass, we found the specific heat, we found the temperature change, but there's one more piece of information and that's right here. How much energy is a Q? So what we're looking for here is we're looking for the energy transfer, we're looking for the Q. The equation that relates these variables, Q equals MC delta T, we're looking for a Q. We have a mass, it's 55 grams. We have a specific heat, it's 0 0.894 joules per gram degree Celsius. We have a temperature change, it's 72.2 degrees Celsius. Now we can treat this like an algebra problem and solve for Q. We have all the variables we need. This is actually an important step. Taking stock of your, of your situation is an important step because if you should have all of the variables and you don't, it means you need to reread the problem for more information. We don't have to worry about that in this case because we found everything we need. Q equals the mass, which is 55 grams, the specific heat, which is 0 0.894 joules per gram degree Celsius, and the change in temperature, which is a positive 72.2 degrees Celsius. The units cancel. Degrees Celsius cancel with degrees. Grams on top cancel with grams on the bottom, leaving us with units of joules, which is a unit of energy, so we feel good about that. 55 times 0 0.894 times 72.2 is... 3,550 joules. The energy is positive, so we know that the aluminum is absorbing heat. How much heat? 3,550 joules. So we feel good about this. Let's look at another problem. 3.5 kilojoules of heat are added to 28.2 grams of iron at 20 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of the iron? 
The specific heat of iron is 0 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius. We have 3.5 kilojoules. Kilojoules are a unit of energy, so this must be my heat. Also, it says of heat, so we feel pretty good about this. 28.2 grams, grams are a unit of mass. So this must be the mass of the sample. 20 degrees Celsius is a temperature. Now, which one is this? Is this the initial temperature, or is this the final temperature? Well, if it's starting at 20 degrees, then that's the initial temperature. But also, it asks us to find the final temperature. We want the final temperature. So 20 degrees Celsius must be the initial temperature. And of course, the specific heat is 0 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius because joules per gram degree Celsius is units for specific heat, but also it tells us that that's the specific heat. Yay! The equation that we're going to use, Q equals MC delta T, we're using this equation because there's a thermal change. We have a Q, we have a mass, we have a specific heat, and we're looking for the temperature change. We need to algebraically solve this equation for the thing that we're looking for. We do that by isolating that variable. We can divide both sides by MC to get delta T by itself. Delta T equals Q over MC. Delta T equals 3.5 kilojoules over 28.2 grams times 0 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now if we look at this, grams are on the bottom here and grams are on the bottom here, except that they're not on the bottom. The grams here are on the bottom of the bottom. So what you've got here is you've got 1 over 1 over grams. And if you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So grams are actually on top. Joules and kilojoules don't cancel. We can get them to cancel. There's 1,000 joules for every 1 kilojoule. Kilojoules cancel, joules on the bottom cancel with joules on top, and we're left with degrees Celsius, but where are my degrees Celsius? At first glance, they look like they're on the bottom. Turns out that they're on the bottom of the bottom, which puts them on top, which is a unit of temperature, which is good. So we take 3.5 and we divide that by 28.2, and we divide that by 0 0.449, and we multiply that by 1,000. And we get 276 degrees Celsius. Notice I'm not paying any attention whatsoever to significant figures. The change in temperature is the final temperature minus the initial temperature, and that equals 276 degrees Celsius. We know that the initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So the final temperature minus 20 degrees Celsius is 276 degrees Celsius. So the final temperature must be 296 degrees Celsius. Looking at it another way, if you start at 20 degrees Celsius and you go up 276 degrees Celsius, you'll end up at 296 degrees Celsius. So this is my answer. My answer is 296 degrees Celsius. So what did I do? I made a list. I wrote down my equation and solved for the variable I was looking for. I plugged in the values and made the units cancel. 
and found my answer. Let's look at another problem. 4.0 grams. That must be a mass. Grams are a unit of mass. The temperature, there are two of them, 274 and 314. So the initial temperature is 274 degrees Celsius because we're going from 274 to 314. So 314 is what we end up with. The sample was found to have absorbed 32 joules. 32 joules is a unit of heat. And they're asking us what is the specific heat of the glass. So we're looking for specific heat. We have the information we need to find the change in temperature. We're going to need that, so let's take 314 degrees Celsius and subtract from that 274 degrees Celsius. 314 minus 274 is 40 degrees Celsius. And we're going up 40 degrees Celsius. The equation, Q equals MC delta T. We have a mass, it's 4 grams. We don't have a specific heat, but we're looking for that. The change in temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, and the Q is 32 joules. So we can solve for specific heat by dividing both sides by M delta T. Doing that will get specific heat by itself. So the equation is the specific heat must be equal to the Q over the mass times the change in temperature. The Q here is 32 joules. The mass is 4.0 grams. And the change in temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. We cancel what units cancel. As it happens, nothing cancels. Is that bad? No, because the units of specific heat are joules over grams degrees Celsius. So we have the appropriate units for our answer. And when we take 32 and divide by 4 and then divide by 40, we get 0 0.2 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And that's our answer. Let's look at another problem. Determine the specific heat of a material if 35 gram sample absorbs 48 joules as it was heated from 293 degrees Celsius to 313 degrees Celsius. Pause the video and try to make your list. Don't go on and solve the problem, but just try to make the list. If this was your list, then you did it correctly. The order is not important. What is important is that you extracted all the information. The change in temperature is 313 degrees Celsius minus 293 degrees Celsius. 313 minus 293 is positive 20 degrees Celsius. So let's get rid of these so that we're not tempted to use them instead of the change in temperature. Now pause the video and see if you can solve algebraically for what we're looking for. Don't plug any numbers in, but solve algebraically. Q equals MC delta T. We're looking for the specific heat. We'll need to divide both sides by M delta T. 
The specific heat, therefore, must be equal to Q over M delta T. So this is my equation. Now that we've solved algebraically, go ahead and plug in all of your values and find the specific heat. Forty-eight joules over thirty-five grams times twenty degrees Celsius is forty-eight divided by thirty-five divided by twenty zero point zero six eight joules per gram degrees Celsius. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! <laughs>